I can't give. How is this not a goal? <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to the OG Show. I'm your host, Luke Kennedy. Today we'll be getting interactive with a singer, songwriter, and music producer. You're gonna get to personal with him and find out a few fun facts about him. This show is being hosted by Assessness Entry. I just sent the golden to the hotel. You can contact Sisters on 0302-905-955 or 0500-729-480. We'll be right back. This segment is brought to you by Best Price. Best quality, best prices. Hey, what's up? What do you have here? I did for you, boss. Tell me, introduce your body. I'm Nick King of Accra, music producer, sound engineer, yeah. um, recording artist, performer, songwriter. Yeah. What's your real name? Ni Komite Kome. Strictly Ghani? Yeah. No English name? No English name. So how did you come up with the name Ni King of Accra? Um, I was just trying to <laughs> differentiate myself from any other person who mm. might come up and be called Ni. So I'm just like setting boundaries. Yeah. So that's how come I chose the name Ni King of Accra. Impressive. So you're into the music industry. How did it all start for you? Um. I don't know if I'm into the music industry, but I'm a musician, and okay. it started when I when I met Hammer, oh. um, Hammer of the last two, yeah. and he he inspired me and took me in and trained me to become like a music producer. So that's how come I got into um, the music. But I've been a lover of music like ever since I was born. Like yeah. I've been in the choir. I, I've been performing ever since I was in junior high school. So. Yeah, so I can I say you are um, a student of Hama. Yes, I am. Okay. Without a doubt. Mm. Um, I re at age eight, you said that you were in the choir and your older brother used to write songs for you. Yeah, that's true. Mm. My older brother, yeah, he used to write music for me and my sister. Okay. And we three performed at church, you know, because um, we grew up in the church. My dad was a reverend minister, so oh. we, we we very much grew up in the church. So that's. That's how that chapter came about. We used to perform music at church. So would you say your brother was a, a major supporter of your love for music? I think he... Uh, almost everybody in the family has like a musical interest. Because my dad, my dad likes music and he writes music. When I was growing up, I used to see my dad behind like a mixing console, like tweaking knobs. And I didn't even know what mixer was by then. Yeah. So that should tell you that he was like way into this before me. And my mom also sings at church. My sister sings, she was in the choir. So it's like every, everybody has that, that musical. So I wouldn't say that he was supporting me, but he was also expressing his interest in music. Yeah. And it, it were one of the, um, the channels that he used to express his interest in music. That's how I would describe it. Interesting. Let's talk about school. School. Where did you start? Um, I grew up in so many places because of my dad's work. So okay. uh, we, we, I was born in North Kanishi. And then from there, we had to, because of work, we had to move to um, Medina. So in Medina, I attended like a, a kindergarten over there yeah. called Auntie Paulina. I don't even know if it's really in existence right now. So we moved from Medina to East Ligon and I started attending elementary school at East Ligon. From there, I went to Accra Academy. Um, mm, for my boy. Yeah, Blair Hall. <laughs> <laughs> for my high school um, education. Yeah. Then from there, Ligon to study philosophy, um, music and psychology. Mm. So when was your major breakthrough into music? Uh, when I was in uni. Yeah. Um, and I produced the beat for Sarko I mean... You produced the beat for Sarko when you were in uni? Yeah. Wow. I was in uni. Um, I can't remember when, like, I use, like, most... When I have, like, no lectures, yeah. I use all of my time to make beats. Because it's something that is, like, part of me. I wanted to be so much, like, on top of my game yeah. with the beats. So that at any point in time, when you bring studio equipment to anywhere that I am, I can produce. 
so it's like it was like a constant mm. rehearsal or practice yeah and it, it became part of me so um i met him before i went to uni in the studio mm. and then we had like that vibe we had a connection at that time so we still kept the link going on then i started sending beats when i was in uni yeah and the rest is history but we had already recorded music before before uni yeah. oh, when nt1 we used to work with um guru and a couple of artists mm. at nt1 because it was sort of like a dream to become like a yeah. very big record label but the dream died along the way so it says that the connection didn't die so we updated the connection when i was in uni yeah. because we had just split everybody had gone to solo we guru went away somebody also went away and i went to school but I couldn't stop like producing. It's, it's, mm. Even when I was in uni, like I divided my time into two: half for for studies and half for music. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. So I sent him um, the, those beats, and the next thing I heard, they were on radio, and I was working on campus, and people are playing it in their rooms, and I'm like, oh, okay. It must be a good feeling. Yeah, it was a really good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> it really felt good. It really did. Yeah. Uh. Every musician, everybody who's into something. Is inspired by something. What would you say inspires you? The the feeling of knowing that what I've done has gone beyond where I imagined it would be. Mm. Yeah, it makes me feel good. It makes me want to do more. Yeah. And who do you have anybody you look up to? Okay. Um, I look up to a lot of people. Yeah. When when I find that you have that that vibe. Yeah. I may not know you personally, or I might never come to talk to you, but I know that you have the vibe, so I'll follow what you do, and it, it keeps me inspired. Mm, so I look up to like other producers too, like um, Dr. Dre Timberland, yeah. um, Ryan Leslie, and down here, um, EL. All, most of the producers that I have as friends are dope, like um, Fortune Dane. Um, Magnum, I look up to a lot of people. Yeah. I might not tell you that I'm looking up to you, but like, I'm 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 looking at you from a distance, distance and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm liking what you're doing. Yeah. So, can you give us like some of the people you work with? Yeah, I've worked with Guru, Safatia, Yell. Um, sometimes I lose count. I, I've worked with Trigmatic, Shatawali. Yeah. Um, I work with a lot of people. <laughs> they might not all come to me. Yeah. But yeah. But is there a particular artist you really, really enjoyed working with and would like to have over and over? I will I enjoy working with everybody. I mean as as long as we have a vibe and we are doing something productive in the yeah. studio, at that point in time I'm liking what we are doing mm. and I know that it's gonna go further than where we are seated. So I enjoy working with everybody. I don't have like a particular favorite artist. Yeah. You know, so when I'm in the studio with an artist like Adam, I'm I'm feeling the vibe. I'm in the zone. We are we are working. Yeah, yeah. So I like everybody I work with, and I enjoy with, and like I enjoy working with everybody that I've worked with, including people that I've not even worked with. I know yeah. that because it's a vibe. Like once once we are in the zone, we are doing something. Like I'm committed and I'm passionate about what we're doing. Yeah. In the moment. So yeah. So I can't like differentiate. I like working with everybody. Okay. Is there any new project you're working on right now? Right now, all all the productions. I have a lot of productions, like yeah. a lot, a lot, over five thousand productions. Impressive. And I still keep making beats like every other every other week. Mm. Now I have like a, a new commitment to um, working on TV, so I don't have um, the time to be making like beats like I used to. But every other week, I try to do something because mm. like. I have my, my laptop in my bag, my bag, and at any free time that I get, I try to produce something, and all of them are going to be on my website. Mm. I'm trying to create something new from that. Let's talk about the Ghana music landscape. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting laugh. <laughs> Do you think the systems put in place to make music reach out to people, and also think, for people? I, Okay, no. And yeah. also for pe for your for the people who get your music to give back something. Do you think there are systems that are making things work? I don't think there are any systems to begin with. Mm. 
Yeah. And so you're being honest. Yes. There are no systems. If you know of any that I, I might be overlooking, you can tell me. But f to me, I don't yeah. think there are any systems set in place. Mm. The only system that we have right now is social media. And that is it. So you feel there is no, should I say, platform that actually makes musicians get the word for their music? No. Not, not that I know of. Mm. There's the um the the selling the selling platforms like um in Ghana I know of um what do you call that website the one the people paying with mobile money to buy music uh, from one fifty pesos to one CD fifty pesos um Afton Afton yeah Afton is, is is but even with Afton I have a problem with their service because it's it doesn't look like they have, like, um, I don't know, I might, be, I might be wrong, but it doesn't look like they have uh, a, a ready market audience who are willing, willing to, to buy mm. just by, like, browsing through. I don't know, maybe I'm just not looking at the world, but that's how I feel about their service. So I'd, I'd rather put my stuff on iTunes, mm. Spotify, Shazam, etc. Do you think Musica could also actually do more to recognize producers? <laughs> I think they can they, they can do more in, in terms of what they think they are doing. Like mm. they can do more to to make everybody benefit. Yeah. Um, musicians, producers, because from what I know or from what I've heard, they distribute. Uh, okay, well, well, they are like facilitating Gamlo to distribute. Our royalties, yeah, but I'm not seeing what they what they're doing because they they talk about come and register with them and then they pay you um, your royalties at the end of, of the month. But I'm also hearing that they they distribute the the royalties according to who is the eldest. I mean, if you're the eldest and within the last five years you've done really nothing, <laughs> why should the chunk of the money be coming to you? That makes sense. That makes it sense. doesn't make sense. Like It's like you're eating off someone's sweat. Yeah. Because if I have the number one record for this year, I expect to, to get the worth of my, 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 my money, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's about time they, they, they invested heavily into making the channels right. I mean, making sure that they, they're able to get the data of who is being played who is being played more and pay the person accordingly yeah you know what i'm saying so i think they have a long way to go mm -hmm. i mean if they if they are dedicated to 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 it they should and another problem i have with them is they insist on people coming to register with them i mean if i've produced i've ever produced a number one record even for the last six months yeah. you should be able to know me and and and, and approach me and tell me that yo um, you produce the song and it has it has gotten about a million streams between um, between the last six months. Yeah. So I have a check for you. Don't tell me because I've not come to register with you. So mm. you don't know about. You should know. That's you should be point. on top of, of your game. You should yeah. know who which artist is doing this, which artist. Is doing. You should know all the producers. It's your job to know. Now I found out you have a website. Yeah. Yeah. Nikinofocard.com. Oh, Kino for Kino for yeah. yeah. What well, what is it about? Okay, so um, you know, when you when okay, like with me, I spread my wings everywhere, trying to know what is going on everywhere. And I know in the West they have like beat portals or production portals where people can can purchase beats from a website. Yeah. To probably their Visa cards, and then record in the comfort of their home because. When I started learning how to make beats, production was was crazy. Like everybody was on the producer, like, like and it, and it gave pressure to the producer. Like yeah. you have like twenty artists in the studio. Like I, I was I was literally I'm in mean, the studio with like 20, 15 to twenty artists when I was learning how to make beats, beats. and they're all in the studio. Everybody's trying to get their song worked on. So you can just imagine that the amount of pressure that Hammer had at the point. Yeah. It, it had its advantages and disadvantages. And I'm I'm like, okay, we're in a new age. I'm trying to bridge that gap of 
where musicians need or they are they are trying to get to everybody's trying to get to like one producer yeah let's make it even like everybody has to get a share of the market so i'm like okay cool yeah. i'm going to place these beats on my website and then integrate a mobile money payment system into the website where you can come purchase beats that take all your fans to or get you in the zone or yeah. give you that vibe that you know that okay i like this beat so you get on the website you listen to about 30 seconds to a minute or preview of what the beat sounds yeah. like. You feel like it can bring about um, what you're trying to write because it's the beats that give the mm. vibe. Like whatever lyric that you hear from any artist, it's the beat that seeps into their their, their core, their yeah. inner being for them to come out with those punchlines mm. that you hear that make you go like, damn, this is crazy. I mean, so if you get on the website, you listen to the beats and it's giving you that vibe. I mean, you just purchase it and you record we're good to go. That's a very, very good initiative. I hear you're a very good FIFA player, so <laughs> I'm going to challenge you to a game. I like playing games. Yeah. I'm not that good. I never, I never <laughs> said anywhere that I was so good. So if you beat me, cool. If I beat you, I get to ask you very personal questions. Agree? Yeah, why not? All right. Let's get on with it. What was your best moment in uni? The best moment? I didn't have any best moment in uni. Everything was just... Um, it was just about, what do you call it? Music and school. Music and school. Yeah, oh, okay. So. You weren't partying? No, oh, funny enough, no. Wow. I'm not much of a, a party person, though. And it, it surprises people because they feel like because I'm a producer, I'm supposed yeah. to be like a party person. I enjoy a party. I mean, back then, I was not like a party person. So you're more of an, intro, an indoor person? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm more of an indoor person. Being, okay. being stuck in the studio, doing doing, doing what, I, what, I, what I like to do. I think EO is also like that. Always studio session, studio session. Yeah, what's what's is it with producers and I mean being that, in the studio the, most of the time? If that if that's the path that you have chose, I mean you should be able to stay committed to it and yeah. Um, and there's the you, there's always room for improvement. There's mm. always I, I never feel like I know everything. Like, yeah, I always feel like I can I can learn something new. So um, yeah, with uni I didn't have any. Crazy cool moments. Mm. You know, nothing like that. Well, that's, that's, that's quite surprising for the king of Accra. <laughs> Manchel, Manchel. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Being a, a production mogul in, in, in Ghana. Mm. Do you want to go beyond? I mean, getting known in Ghana definitely opens doors outside, so definitely. It's going to be like a, like something that is, is, is going to catapult. I mean, you have to first get known on your turf before mm. before you... you, you go point. Go, yeah. Even though... I, I, I like I never consider myself like I'm there. I've reached no. Mm. There's always room for improvement. So yeah. people will be like, oh, kind of a car, blah. But I'm still working hard to, you know, reach the next person because there's there's a saying in a can that translates that you 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 like you might think that your your house is far, but there's somebody living behind you. Yeah, you know I'm saying. So we're trying to reach that person living behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. using Kidi, Kusiata. Kusiata. New acts. What do you think of them? I like their vibe, especially with Kusiata. Mm. I mean, he's one of the people that 
gives me a certain vibe because before he became Chris Yat, I had an opportunity to work with him because um, Pac took me to Tema mm. to work on his mixtape and he is the artist that like I first encountered when we got to the studio yeah. and we recorded a song on the spot like no rehearsal or nothing we just Spontaneous. Yeah, spontaneous. I made a beat with Pac. And I have like, except of, of us like making the, the beats out in the studio. And it's, it was crazy. It was crazy. Mm. It was crazy. He just laid the, the, the verse on the spot. And, you know, if, if, if it was someone who'd be like, ah, I don't know this kid. Like, why should I come and record yeah. with him? But I didn't have, like, I, don't, I never have problems working with, with people. So far as I feel like the vibe is right, yeah. I mean, we should work. I don't have any specific favorites to say, oh, I want to work with this person, I don't want to work with this person. So far as the, the vibe is right, we should work. I don't see why we can't work, you yeah. know what I'm saying? We should work. Because, like, it's, it's crazy how, like, one person can make over 500 to 1,000 different beats, even to about 5,000 different beats, like, it's it's crazy like yeah. you can put like five producers here give them the same samples give them the same drum kit give them they will never no no one will ever make the same beat mm. even if they flip the samples the same the kick the kick drums are going to be the kicks like the drum the percussions yeah. are going to be different so it's it, it just stresses on the fact that you never know what magic you are you are missing out by saying i don't want to work with this yeah. person i don't want to there's a vibe in there that you are missing and that vibe could take you somewhere crazy that you never even imagined so i, I never like try to be like i don't want to work with this person right now afrobeat is a massive thing all over the world yep yesterday i was watching an interview on chelsea tv where antonio rudiger was talking about listening to David and Whiskey songs in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Did you imagine African music going that far? Of course. Of course. I mean... <laughs> that was close. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna... You want <laughs> yeah, that was very <laughs> close. <laughs> You're trying to ask me a very interesting question yeah. so that you can score me. Afrobeat. Yeah. yeah, so like, Afro, it's, it's something... I knew, I knew like deep in my heart that African music was going to go mm. somewhere beyond where it was somewhere 10 years ago. Yeah. But I didn't know how it was going to happen. The thing is, you have belief in something, but yeah. you don't know how it's going to happen. That, and that's the most important thing, to have that belief that yeah. it's going to happen. But as to how it's going to happen, that, that shouldn't be your, that shouldn't be your bother. Just because you believe that it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I think, it's not just me, a whole lot of people had that, had that dream yes. and it has become possible through Afrobeats, mm. you understand? And it's something we should, we, sh we, should, we should embrace and make sure that we own it or else a few, a few like, years from now, Afrobeats is going to be owned by non-Africans and that would, mm. that would be, that would be a very, a very, oh sh that, that would be something that would be very sad that we, yeah. we, we have something very authentic and we don't own it no, no yeah. more. And, and that's something that we realize with most things that Africans have. Like, we have our gold, but we don't own it. Like, yeah. somebody tells us how much they're going to pay for our gold. Somebody tells us how much they're going to pay for our cocoa. You know, it's, it's crazy. Mm. I will never have something valuable or something authentic and allow you to tell me how much I'm supposed to sell it or how I'm supposed to value it, you understand? It will never happen. Yeah. Never. So far as I'm alive, it will, it will happen. So I think Afrobeat is, is something we have to own. And I'm getting more into the groove of the South African kind of, like, Afrobeat. Mm. The, they have this general called Mom. and it's it's crazy like mm. i get i get all sorts of good bumps when i listen to their kind of productions and it's really inspiring me i, I don't just stick to just afro beats coming yeah. from ghana or afro beats coming from nigeria i want to be able to fuse afro beats coming from nigeria with afro beats coming from south africa 
and Ghana and like have that because music evolves. Yeah. You can't just say okay, it's just the guitar and the drums and we have to add something to it. Something that's going to keep the vibe fresh every time and less monotonous, you understand? Yeah. So I feel like Afrobeats it's, it's, it's our it's our pass it's our visa to to let people know what we got here in terms of music and they already recognize because Afrobeats have taken over London they are in the it's an, it's it's on the radio in the U S mm. you know people like Davido uh, <laughs> people like people like Davido are are channeling the the Afrobeats to places that's unimaginable. I never, I never knew or thought that mm. um, an African artist could could get on um, Power 105 breakfast, their breakfast, their breakfast show. Um, was 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 Power Power 105? Yeah. Their breakfast show by Charlemagne and the rest of the crew. Yeah. I, I never knew it was it was going to be it was going to be possible for an African artist to be there. But yeah. Ice Prince has been there. The video has been there. And Casper Nuvez has been there. <laughs> and it's, you're, you're really, <laughs> you're really trying to score me. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. King of Accra. So, your final words. God bless Ghana. <laughs> your so handle so on who, social who, media. Who won? Who won this game? Well, it looks like you beat me by a lone goal, but I think I was lenient. I was kind enough. We can we, we can we can switch it up. <laughs> don't be lenient. I don't need. We should definitely know. do that after the show. Definitely. Yeah. So your social media handles. Um, Twitter, okay. Facebook. So Twitter is at Ken of a Crowd. Yeah. Um, Instagram is Ken of a Crowd with the number one. Um, Snapchat is Ken of a Crowd. Yeah. And then you can visit KenofAcra.com and check out the beats we have there. So there you go. It's been great and fun being interactive with Nii King of Accra. Once again, we shot this on Cessna's E3. I just sent the Golden to the hotel. You can contact them on 0302-905-955 or 050-729-480. This segment was also sponsored by Best Price. They gave us the console, the piece, the PlayStation 4, on which he moved my ass. They had Kukumulele. You can get them on 0246-330-667. Catch you next time, Luke Kennedy.